Hi. In order to fly your drone after civil twilight in the evening, you must attach a light that's visible for three statute miles. Looking at the FAA website, we can find this statement. Is there a standard for the three-mile visibility requirement for twilight operations in terms of lighting, colors, position, orientation on the aircraft, and flash rate? The answer is there is currently not a standard for UAS or drones other than they must be visible for three statute miles. And that's it. So there's no current standard in terms of color, placement of the light, or its ability to strobe or flash, nor is there a color requirement. So at its very basic, it's just a light that you attach to some place on the drone of your choosing that's visible for three statute miles. The Chinese online retailer Banggood sells the BRDRC drone light for about $9. This is the cheapest one I could find. It's a bare board, which is what I wanted in order to ensure that I got the lightest weight strobe for my drone. This brand is also sold on Amazon for $15 plus shipping. I suspect shipping time will be vastly reduced for the Amazon, but you're paying about twice the price so you can get it faster. To test its visibility, I took it out to the desert away from city lights, placed it on a stand, and drove three miles away from it to ensure I could see it, and indeed, I was able to see it. The BRDRC comes packaged in a nice plastic case. It includes adhesive Velcro pads to allow you to easily mount the light on your drone. The FAA does not indicate a preferred location on the drone for the light, so the only thing you need to make sure of is that you don't place it over the GPS sensors, which are usually in the top center of the body of the drone or over any internal antennas. I chose a different mounting option that I'll cover in a few minutes. Also included is a USB-C to USB-A charging cable and a manual. The board has seven LEDs on it, three large white ones, and one red and one green smaller LEDs, along with the charge status LED and battery level LED. Obviously, the three white LEDs will be much brighter than the two colored LEDs. On the end closest to the LEDs is a small button used to power the light on or off and to select its mode. The other end of the board has a USB-C charging port. Just above that is the LED to indicate its charge status. Red means it's charging and green means it's fully charged. The power button has two functions. This button allows you to power the device on and off as well as to select one of 10 possible modes for it. To the right of this button is the battery level indicator light. A brief press of the power mode button will activate this light. A steady light means 70 to 100% charged. Once a second flashing means 70 to 40% charged and twice a second flashing indicates 40 to 0% charged. Fully charged, the unit will run for two hours and 50 minutes in slow flash mode, which is probably the most common mode you'll use. You get slightly less charge time if you use the continuous light mode or the fast flash mode. Charging the unit takes 20 minutes from a completely exhausted battery. To power the unit on or off, press the power button until the unit turns on. Once powered on, another long press will power it off. When the unit is initially powered on, the main continuous white light source will be lit. There are 10 modes you can choose from. Pressing the power or mode button again will make the white LEDs flash. Press it again and the red light will flash quickly. Again and the green light flashes quickly. Once more and we're back to the white LEDs and they'll flash slowly. Another click activates the slow flashing red LED and another will do the same for the green LED. The next click will flash the red and white LEDs alternately. Another click will alternate with the green and white once more and the red and green LEDs will alternate. 
A final click brings us back to the start with just the white LEDs on continuously. Hold the power mode button for a long press to power the unit off. Powering it off can be done when it's in any of its modes. A final note before I wrap things up here is that I did not want to have anything adhesive stuck to my drone, so I chose a third-party mount from a company called AerialPixel.com. They make 3D printed flexible mounts for strobes on the drone. They support mounting options for front and rear arms on whatever drone you have from DJI. They also make them for Autel, Unique, and Parrot. They cost more than the strobe itself at $12 each, but for me, they're worth every penny. There are links for everything mentioned in the video in the description. I highly recommend the strobe and the Aerial Pixel strobe mounts. I think you need to have the bare board version of the BRDRC strobe to use with the mounts, but you should confirm that with Aerial Pixel before you buy. They are super responsive, so don't be afraid to reach out to them. Thanks so much for coming by and watching this review. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd be so kind as to click like, that will help others on YouTube find this review. And until the next video, take care.